What is going on guys? Marcus here with the Reformation Woodshop. Today's video is a little bit different. You will see I am in my wife's office or our computer room slash sewing room slash whatever you want to call it. And that is because today I am so excited to show you guys my two new 3D printers. I've been really interested in 3D printing for a while now. Just seeing 3D prints come to life is extremely cool to me and now I am immersing myself in the world of 3D printing. In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 3D printed items that every woodworker needs in their shop. In this video, you're gonna see me using the Wido X40 and you're also gonna see me using the Tina 2. All right, so let's hop into it. Item number one is a sander harness. I printed this Festool sander holder specifically designed for the 125 EQ or the 150 EQ. If you do a lot of sanding, you'll know there is a potential to always be dropping your sander off of a table. And when your sander is $500, you want to not do that as often as you do. If you're working casually, you know you're going to come back to the shop in five minutes. You can hang it on the wall and walk away. As I go through these projects, I'm going to try and label all of them easy, intermediate, or advanced. Most of the things on this list are really easy. This sander harness being one of them. If you're looking for a quick way to store your sander and you don't want to drop it on the floor, this is the 3D print for you. Item number two, zero clearance inserts. Whenever I was searching for woodworking things to make, zero clearance inserts came up. So I looked up bandsaw throat plates or insert plates and I found this one. The insert file was made for a Delta bandsaw, but I printed it anyways and it fit in my Craftsman. If you're not familiar what zero clearance inserts are, it's just something that you can use to make sure that you're not getting any tear out. It's something that you put into your tools like a table saw and as you run wood across your table saw, it ensures that you don't get as much tear out or blow out as you normally would. They're actually super common on miter saws as well. Item number three is one of those things that I saw that got me interested in 3D printing for woodwork. Number three, is hidden storage for your table saw. I don't know where I saw this before, but when I did, I said to myself immediately, I need that. Most table saw fences run on a black square steel tube, and in that tube, it's just a hollow space. On the edges of that space, you get a black plug that you can pop on and off. Well, if you take yours, pop it off, you can print, you can 3D print a box that can sit inside that storage. Why? Why not? You wanna put your pencils in there, you wanna put your money in there, you wanna put your you can put your weed in there. Whatever you want to put in there, this hidden storage will hold it and no one will find it. The only reason that I labeled this guy an intermediate project is because it prints in two parts. You have to glue them together. I actually printed both parts but ditched the lid because I wanted it to look seamless so I took the cap that was on my table saw, cut off the fittings for it, and glued that cap to the box so that it looks like it doesn't even exist and it's not even there. Item number four. This is probably the most printed woodworking item that exists. The scale ranges from easy all the way to advanced. I'm going to talk about advanced because that's what I've got in my workshop. Item number four is dust collection. Everyone knows miter saw dust collection sucks and not in a good way. There is a specific print that totally encompasses the area where dust explosion happens. We use this at the cabinet shop where I work and it is a dream. It has two dust ports that are connected to two different shop backs because we used the miter saw that much. That specific print I would call advanced because it's a large long term print and you have to glue the two sides together. If you don't want to take it that far, there are also prints that are couplers that attach to specific dust hoses and shop vacs. While they work, they're not as good as the first one that I mentioned. Item number five. Item number five is where you get real bougie and you're just trying to make things to make things. In essence, these prints are just shelves. I labeled them intermediate because you have to make sure that everything that you have is the right size. You have to make sure that you're printing for the right planes and you have to get all your ducks in a row or else your prints will go wrong. It wasn't something that was super, super necessary for me, but it's a nice addition. The other plane hanger I made comes in two parts. And like I said before, you have to make sure that everything is right and the spacing is perfect. You can get one for any plane that you have. I really like this print. It's really cool and really easy to take things off the wall. Number six. Number six is a really easy print to do and it's something that's pretty useful in the shop. Something that you can just toss in a drawer and forget about, come back to use later whenever you need it. 
Number six is a center finder for round shapes. On top of being able to find center on round shapes, you can use it to find center on squares. You can create 45 degree angles. And then the specific print that I found, you can utilize it to do all kinds of round shapes and drawing and stuff like that. Like I said, it's something that you throw into a toolbox until you needed it, and then thank God that you printed it later. I'm sure all of your paint cabinets look exactly like mine. Stacks of stained cans, stacks of old paint that you'll never use, and paint cans with their lids off, cans that are half empty or just thrown around. Number seven stops all of that. Number seven is paint can storage. This was a pretty easy print to make, but I labeled it intermediate because there is a little bit of common sense that's gonna need to go into making this work for you. The bottoms of these prints are dovetailed together and you have to be able to put those together. Line them up on the wall really nice and neat. Get the perfect spacing so that it fits your paint cans just the way you need it to. Number eight is something that I needed for work, so I printed it. That's what's so great about 3D printing is that you can make what you want and you can always find what you want if you don't know how to make it. This is a corner round jig. It does exactly what it sounds like and makes square corners round. We do panels at my job all the time and I need round corners to set those in routed corners. This is specifically made to do exactly what we need. Outside of just making round shapes, corner round jigs can be used while using a router. So you can take your router, set the bearing to be at the exact height that you need it. You can run your bit right across this jig and make the corner round for you right then and there. Number nine is a finger sander. I'm talking about a detailed scrubber or sander. Something that you use to get into the tight spots to clean up all your little imperfections and all your little pieces. This is actually the first thing that I printed that had actual screws and required me to use my brain when putting it together. I had to come in, cut a piece of sandpaper that fit perfectly, screw it on tight, and as soon as I got it together, I was able to get all the tight corners on my latest build, my toy box for my daughter. This is one of those tools that you don't know you need it until you have it. And number 10, probably one of my favorite items on the list, and this is one of those ones that once I saw it, it sparked my interest in 3D printing woodworking items. It's a super simple print, super easy to print. Once you do print it, your life's gonna be changed forever. Number 10 is a universal battery holder. When you become an avid power tool user and you've got six batteries for 75 tools, you've got your leaf blower, your reciprocating saw, multi-tool, four drill, circular saw that requires two batteries, jigsaw, all the things start to add up and you wanna make sure all your batteries are charged at all times. The way you do that and keep account of your stuff is to have it in a specific place set aside. And you know which battery needs to be charged and which battery is ready to go. And you guys know me, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a Makita snob, so I found a print that was specific for Makita batteries and it even had Makita written on it, which was kind of nice, kind of cool. I saw this on Instagram a ton of times and I knew that was gonna be the first thing I printed and it was. It was number one on the list. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for me about my 3D printers, about the things that I printed, or if you have any suggestions of things that I should be printing and I am not already, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please like it. That way I know how to make another one. If you're interested in any of the items that I printed, I'll leave all the links to all of their files down in the comment section down below. If you want a physical version of any of those things, please comment and let me know and maybe I'll open up my Etsy shop to do stuff like that. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go out the outside to play with the camp castle. To play with the sand. Okay, bye. Bye.